Um, so thank you. So my name is uh, Laura Ferris. I am a dermatologist, and my interest is in early detection of melanoma. So um, melanoma is a problem that is not getting better. It's actually getting worse um, in terms of the number of people who are getting melanoma. So while we saw that certain states have higher incidence of melanoma, what we see here is that over time, the number of people who develop melanoma is increasing. And it's estimated that about 1 in 36 men and 1 in 55 women will develop melanoma at some point in their life. Um, so the reason that um, I'm putting this slide up is to show you um, why early detection is so important. So the, these are what we call survival curves. We see these for any kind of cancer. Um, and what we see is that each line represents a different stage of melanoma, which means a different, um, you know, how early we find it. So melanoma in site two is the thinnest melanoma. It is the earliest form. It's, con it's confined only to the top layer of the skin. And if we we can find melanoma in site to accurately diagnose it and excise that with a pretty simple procedure that can be done in the office, we have essentially a 100% cure rate of that. So if we could find all melanoma that early, um, we wouldn't need all of the therapies that we're going to be hearing about. Um, now, some melanomas start a little bit, uh, start later or um, are, are deeper when they're, uh, or a later in stage when they are discovered. But however, if we look, stage one melanoma are much earlier than stage four, which we see in the yellow. So if we can find our melanomas really confined to the earlier stages, the proportion of people who will survive from melanoma will be greatly increased. Um, and this sort of shows you why that is. So this is early stage. This is melanoma in situ. We can see the tumor here in brown confined to the top layer of the skin. Over time, it starts going deeper and deeper into the skin, um, beyond that top layer and into the, the dermis. Um, and then ultimately, the tumor cells will go um, deeper into the skin and then they can invade into the lymphatics or into the blood vessels in the skin. And that's how melanoma then spreads beyond the skin. So it generally first goes to the lymph nodes and then from there, it can go actually all over the body. And so um, that's why we see melanoma metastases in the brain or in the liver. And when a patient comes to us at that stage, we, they're, they're stage four and this is very advanced melanoma, and this is where our survival is lower. So what we're trying to do is sort of catch the horse before it gets out of the barn, um, get, the, get this tumor at this stage, excise it in the office so that it doesn't have the opportunity to spread. Um, so why is early detection so important? If we take a very thin, uh, thin melanoma, so 0.1 millimeters, which would be um, considered a just beyond that melanoma in situ, but very early, um, the, it, and you excise that right away, um, you know, your 10-year probability of dying from that is like 1%. It's very low. Most people do really well. But let's say that we uh, delay finding that and removing it um, for up to a year. Some melanomas are going to grow and be more aggressive, and some are going to um, grow more slowly. But for those melanomas that are going that grow uh, the most quickly and that are the most aggressive, we would estimate that in a year you could go from having a one percent chance of dying to a thirty-seven percent chance of dying. So finding it early and removing it is so important. Um, so what's the so the way that we do that is that we do screening. So we look at people who have maybe one questionable mole or somebody who doesn't even think that they have melanoma on their skin, and we look them over head to toe, and we we look to see if uh, if we find anything suspicious, and if they do, we do a skin biopsy. So um, you know we in medicine we like to have evidence for everything that we do. So when we do things like we're all familiar with breast cancer screening, for example, mammography. There are big studies that were done, what we call prospectively. So up front, one group got mammography and one group didn't, and we looked to see how those, how those patients did, and we said, oh, we've got good substantial evidence to say we should be doing this, and so we started a screening program. We really don't have those kind of studies that were done prospectively um, for skin cancer. But you know, we have evidence such as looking back at people who are diagnosed with melanoma and saying, did they have a skin check in the one to three years before? they were diagnosed.
diagnosed and finding that, in fact, those people who had had a skin screening exam actually had thinner melanoma and did better. So that was evidence that suggested this probably does help. But really, the best piece of evidence we have um, comes out of Germany. So in Germany, uh, they, did a, a, they did a screening, uh, they initiated a screening program. So what they did was for a one-year period in one state in Germany, they said everybody who's 20 years or older, um, who's in our national health insurance plan, which is most people, um, we invite you to come in and get your skin looked over uh, by either a dermatologist or a primary care doctor. And about one-fifth of the population took them up on that. And so um, most of the patients were actually screened not by a dermatologist, but by a primary care doctor. Some were screened directly by a dermatologist. The primary care doctors could then refer the patient to a dermatologist if they found something suspicious. And if, uh, if the dermatologist agreed this was concerning, that lesion was removed. And so what they found was that they were able to, they found about one, one skin tumor, not necessarily melanoma, there are other skin cancers um, that were found as well, but one per 116 people screened. And so if we look here, this is just looking at melanoma, and this the solid lines here are uh, women in the red and men in the blue. The reason we is, and this is the number of melanomas found during, during this one-year screening program. So what we can see is there was an increase in the number of melanomas found. Why were, were there more found in women? Because more women showed up to get their skin looked at. So about three times as many women as men showed up to get screened, and that's something that we see, um, and we'll talk about why that's a, a problem, and we need to think about changing that, um, that ratio. But what we can see is there were definitely more melanomas found. So, um, so that, that was an important finding. Now, it, we didn't just want to find late melanomas or uh, deep melanomas or late stage melanomas, but it turned out that when we looked at these numbers, about 90% of the melanomas that were found were thin. So we call thin less than a millimeter. So this was good news, that these were early curable melanomas that were being picked up. Now, what really matters is did this impact the number of people who died from melanoma? And so when we see these solid lines lines here. Um, this is the time when the skin checks were occurring, but what you're looking for is five years after, are people dying of melanoma at the same rate? And what we can see here is that this death curve starts to take a nosedive down, and we see fewer men and fewer women died after this. So this was really good evidence that, in fact, the screening mattered. And in fact, um, this is a map of before the screening initiative. This is a map of Germany and the different provinces. The one where screening occurred is Schleswig-Holstein, this, this, uh, this area right here. The darker the color, the greater the mortality from melanoma, the more deaths from melanoma in an area. And so it, um, if we look at pre-screen versus post-screen, what we can see is one area gets lighter in color. That's right here, the Schleswig-Holstein. The other areas either get darker or stayed the same. So this was really good evidence that, in fact, the screening was, it wasn't just a spurious finding. The screening was really what was responsible for this decrease in deaths from melanoma, um, because only this area had, it, had an increased mortality. And we saw, and that translated to about a 50% reduction in melanoma deaths. And based on this, Germany now provides, as part of their national health insurance, skin cancer screening to everybody 35 or older every two years. So that's great for Germany, but what about here in Pennsylvania? We wanted to say, can we replicate this in Pennsylvania? So this is a project that uh, we've been working on. Uh, Dr. Kirkwood really started up this program, and uh, it's been a great to be a part of it. Also, our primary care physician team here at UPMC is very involved in this. And um, in fact, what we have done is we have a validated program where they can go online using the, the training system that we use as physicians at UPMC to learn uh, you know, new initiatives, new skills, and they can take a course and learn how to diagnose, how to do a skin check, what skin cancer looks like, learn about melanoma, learn how to diagnose it, and then um, what to do if they find something. And then as part of our electronic record system, when those uh, physicians are seeing patients who are 35 or older, they get a 
prompt that says, this person is eligible for a skin cancer screening, would you like to do it now? And then they can, while the patient's in the office for another reason, offer them this screening, put them in a gown and look them over head to toe. And so um, the good news is when we've looked at this, we have nearly 60,000 uh, patients who have, been, who have had skin cancer screening. We have one group that has been very, uh, has been trained through the system, and then we have the rest of the physicians sort of as our comparison group, and it looks like we are finding more melanomas in that group of, uh, of the patients who are taken care of by the primary care doctors who have been who have been trained to screen. Um, we also know that if our physicians are taking this, this course that we offer, that they're a lot more likely to do skin cancer screening. So you know, we've got years to get this up and uh, uh, you know, expand this program, look at how we're doing, but we think that this is very encouraging that we can actually translate these findings um, right here at home. So, as I mentioned in Germany, what they found was that about three times as many women as men decided to get screened. And if you pick up a women's magazine, this is an ad that was in there of a young woman saying, I'm going to go to the dermatologist every year, I'm going to get screened. Um, the, so that's definitely what I see in my office, too. The problem is, if we look at who gets melanoma and who dies for melanoma, it's actually men who get melanoma more, and it's men who are dying from melanoma more. But if we look at, in one study that we did in our office, we, um, we looked at how many, what percentage of the people who came in for skin cancer screening were women versus men, and about two-thirds of the patients were women, and only about a third were men. Um, also, younger people tend to be a little more aware and interested in getting screened, but in fact, most of the death that we see from melanoma is in, uh, is in patients who are uh, over 50 and over 60. So what we really want to do is make sure that we are encouraging men and uh, certainly people over, uh, over 50 to, uh, to uh, understand the importance of this and make sure that they're being screened. Um, so when we look particularly in what we'll call older men, which we're going to say men over 60, um, the incidence of these thicker tumors the tumors that are more advanced, um, was really increased primarily in men over 60. And when we look at national screening data, not just in our office, if we look at men over 50 screened through the American Academy of Dermatology's program, they were only a quarter of those screened, but in those screenings, they were 44% of the confirmed melanoma. So we, if we want to get the most you know, uh, bang for our buck out of screening, we should be screening men over 50 because they are the most likely to get melanoma. Um, and just the, you know, looking at the importance of age, the probability that a 60-year-old white man is going to develop melanoma in the next nine years of his life is nearly five times higher than the probability that a newborn white male will develop melanoma over the next 40 years. So um, you know, this is really the group that's less likely to come in and most likely to die from melanoma. So if you are a man over 60 or if you are the loved one of a man over 60, it's important that this group is coming in for skin cancer screening. Um, and again, the age uh, factor, so sometimes it's, as you get older, you have more doctor's visits. It's easy to say, I'm going to put off the skin check. But if we look at people coming in for, um, for another reason to a dermatologist and ask, being asked to remove their clothes so that we can look at all their skin, if we take younger patients under 30, um, in one study, you needed to screen over 3,000 of them to find one skin cancer. But if you took patients who were between 60 and 69, you only needed to screen 25 people to find a skin cancer, and you only needed to screen 170 to find a melanoma. So really, the important, uh, very important that, um, that we have patients who are over 50, particularly, getting screened for melanoma. Okay, so going to the doctor and getting screened is one way. The thing that's unique about melanoma is that it is on your skin, it's visible to you, and you can find it not just when it's advanced, but you can find the very earliest melanoma in situ yourself on your skin and bring it to the attention of your doctor. So we recommend that people do skin self-examination. So that is looking at all of your skin, front, back, use a mirror, um, have somebody help you because thing, looking at things like your, your back or the back of your legs can be challenging. And we recommend that you do this regularly so that you can find um, lesions that are look different to you, that look like they're new, that look like they're changing, that just don't seem like all of the other moles in your 
body, and we'll talk about what you're looking for. Um, so, you know, why is this important? It turns out that if we look at uh, multiple different studies, most melanomas overall, and about ha half or more, are actually first found by the patient. So this is, uh, unlike things like colon cancer or breast cancer, patient detection is so important. And this is a study that looked at uh, skin self-examinations and how deep the melanoma is, which tells us if it's being found at an early or advanced stage. And it turned out that people who did a skin self-examination anywhere from one to 11 times a year, so that can be up to once a month, assuming we'll all forget once in a while, um, or I tell people once every season, so fall, spring, winter, summer, um, when the season starts, look at your skin head to toe. And it turned out that if the people who did this one to 11 times a year had a statistically significant lower depth of their melanoma, so this, was, this is good evidence that skin self-examination works. So what am I looking for when, I, when I'm doing a skin self-exam? Um, well, we, we look for the ABCDs of melanoma were sort of the first guidelines that we had, and we've now expanded those. So um, we'll, I'll show you what that means. So A is asymmetry, so two halves that don't look like each other. B is border irregularity, so this isn't a nice smooth... Uh, circle, this is a, you know, this melanoma has really irregular borders. Colors, so more than one color. Uh, diameter, D is diameter, so a size greater than, a uh, diameter greater than a pencil eraser, six millimeters. Um, however, if you find something that doesn't look right and it's smaller, we definitely find lots of small melanomas, so that's, just because it's not six millimeters isn't a reason to, uh, to, to think everything's fine. E is evolving, so changing. So this is a, a picture of a mole that's changing over time. So if it starts like this, um, you know, when you start to see it looking like this or this, that's time that you need to get that mole evaluated. Um, R is for regression. So this is a, a spot that was dark and it starts becoming white in the center. That's a concerning sign. And then the ugly duckling, and this is really an important factor for patients to think about. You're looking for the one thing on your skin that doesn't look like the other. So maybe all your moles are light brown and they're three or four millimeters across, but then you've got one that's half brown and half black and it's six millimeters. That is something that is an ugly duckling. It doesn't fit for you. You need that to uh, be looked at by a doctor. Also, it may be that all of a sudden you have a new pink bump and you never had a pink bump before in that spot and it's not going away within a week or two. That's something that should be looked at because while it doesn't look like any of the pictures here, there are melanomas that don't, you know, sort of read the textbook and fit the bill. And so um, that's something that could be concerning. It's an ugly duckling because you don't have anything like that. That should be looked at. So this is just to give you an idea. Melanoma can have lots of different appearances. So some of these may look like what you see if you look on the internet and look at melanoma, and some of these are not going to look. So this is an example of a pink bump that was new. That was a melanoma uh, that just didn't have any pigment. This maybe looks like what you see in a, on a website or if you look at melanoma. This is an advanced melanoma. This is melanoma on a fingernail. So we think of melanoma as being you know, on, our, on our back or on our legs, but it can be on the fingernail. So it's just, just to remind us how melanoma can look so different. Um, and if something is suspicious, concerning, or it's your ugly duckling, it should be looked at. Okay, so how can we do a better job of this? Well, we talked about, you know, uh, better educating the public and patients so that we can help the patients define their own melanomas. Um, we can encourage the people to get screened. And then also, um, even for doctors, it can be tough to identify early melanomas. So um, they don't, early melanomas often are very subtle in appearance. And so one of my areas of interest um, has been technologies that can help physicians define melanoma early. So one thing is a very simple technology is just simple total body photography. And Dr. Kirkwood and I both use this a lot. Um, we have patients, particularly those who have lots of atypical moles, where it's hard to say, did this change? Well, if you have one or two moles, you can follow them. If you have 150 moles, it's hard to tell the one that changed. So what we do is we'll have patients get a full set of images of their skin so that one, they can have them at home. And when they look at their skin, if they say, I don't know if that mole on my arm changed, 
change, they pull up their photos and say, that's what it looked like two years ago when I had these photos taken. It's different. I'm going to go call my doctor now. Or we use them in the office, too. So if we see something, we think it looks a little atypical, we can go see what it looked like. So change is a, is a big uh, helper. We also look for new moles. So if you think something's uh, new, then it's helpful to have photographs. Uh, as a dermatologist, one thing that I use is something called a dermatoscope. So this is a tool that um, we put right on the skin on top of a lesion. It magnifies it, but it also lets me see deeper structures in the skin. So I can see things with this tool that I can't see with my naked eye. Um, I trained in how to use this. I read on this. I've taken courses. I uh, did my residency using this. So it takes a long time to learn how to use this tool, but it's very helpful to us. So I started out using something like this that I could carry around, and now I even have something like this that I can attach to an iPad or my iPhone, and I can uh, always have it with me in my pocket. I can take pictures. I can consult with my colleagues on something questionable, and I can also put this in a patient's chart if I'm trying to follow something. Um, so this is an example of sort of the difference between what I can see with a dermatoscope and what I can see. This is with my naked eye. This is with this tool. I can see things like the different colors or the structures at the edge of this that tell me this is concerning for melanoma. I need to biopsy that lesion. Um, so people have said, well, that's great, but can we, can we, we have computers now. Can we train computers to be able to do this? So this is a device that has been, it was approved by the FDA in 2011. It's called Melafine. So this is like a dermatoscope at a higher level. So this is a tool. This is the dermatoscope. This obviously doesn't fit in your pocket. This has 10 wavelengths of light, and it lets, it goes deep down into the skin and lets you see more. So instead of getting one picture like I showed you, you get 10, and it lets you look at different, it looks at different structures. And um, really what this does, though, is that it doesn't just say, here are the pictures, you as the trained dermatologist look at this. It has a computer that's been trained on lots of images of benign or malignant lesions, and then it gives the lesion a score, and based on that says, we think this is suspicious for melanoma, it should be biopsied, or we think this is fine. Um, so the, the way that we evaluate tools like this is called is by what we call sensitivity. So how often, if this was a melanoma, did it correctly say that should be biopsied? And that was really good. It was like 98% of the time, which is better than most doctors are. Um, however, we also look at specificity, because if you biopsied everything you looked at, you'd never miss anything, but you'd also be doing a lot of unnecessary biopsies. And that was only about 10%. Um, so, um, and if we look at this, you know, compared to how did a bunch of dermatologists do, this is looking at the same set of lesions where dermatologists could look at a picture of the mole, a picture of the dermatoscopic image of a mole, um, and then it said, I would biopsy yes or no, and then we had Melafine do the same thing. We can see doctors kind of were all over the board. Um, so the sensitivity of the doctors was about 72%, whereas the Melafine was 97%. But the specificity, meaning how often were you right to call something benign, is much better for doctors. And if we put Melafine on uh, with the doctors, we can see it's up here in sensitivity, in true positives, but it has tons of false positives. So this is you know, something that is of interest, but it's not, it's not a perfect tool. And in fact, this was a New York Times article saying, we think that you know, potentially this, uh, this gives us, tells us to do so many biopsies that we're going, it's not necessarily helpful. So one of the things that I have uh, been working on is looking at something that could take not these fancy 10 wavelength of light images, but the ones that we take every day in clinic with our uh, dermatoscope. And can I use computers to tr help us in reading those? And so we're very fortunate that we have not just UPMC and Pitt here, but Carnegie Mellon, which is full of of incredibly intelligent people with uh, great knowledge of computer science. And so I have collaborators over at Carnegie Mellon who work on uh, this topic of computer vision. And we said, can we train a computer to look at these simple images that we have so that we would have a more um, less expensive, easier to use tool? And how can we do? So what we did is we took, we trained, the, uh, we trained a computer on 93 benign lesions and 160 skin cancers. And we said, this is what a benign lesion looks like and this is what a skin cancer looks like. And then we tested it on a, a, a completely different set of images of 39 melanomas um, and 129 benign lesions and 14 other skin cancers. And then we did a similar reader study of, of dermatology practitioners and we said, how does computer versus doctor do? 
And so the way that we did this was we gave each lesion a score of saying if it's the higher your score, the worse we think that the computer thinks you look, and the lower, the more reassuring. And so what we can see here is looking at scores, the invasive melanomas had the highest score. These are those thinner melanomas in site two. These are other skin cancers. Uh, and then some other benign lesions, with the most benign being ones that I looked at and another dermatologist looked at, and we both agreed this really does not need to come off. And so this was encouraging that the computer was scoring things similarly to what we knew they were. Um, and so if we look at our sensitivity and specificity, what we found is that our computer could actually accurately pick up 97% of the melanomas, so 38 out of 39 melanomas, but our specificity specificity was actually a little better than what was seen, for example, with Melafine. Um, overall, it was about 42%. And for those lesions that two dermatologists said this doesn't need to be biopsied, it was even higher at 74%. Um, and then when we looked at how we did against, uh, against readers, so 30 people who were either dermatologists, dermatology residents, or physician assistants, uh, what we found was that we had a higher sensitivity than the doctors or, uh, or physician assistants, and a specificity that was a little bit lower than them, but still um, pretty good. So we think that this is really encouraging. We're working on developing this and making this available to, uh, to primary care doctors in particular, and um, yeah, hopefully this will be something that is a more portable, inexpensive tool that can be used um, with very simple machinery. And these are just some examples of you know, the kind of lesions that we had in our study. This is the one melanoma that was, that was missed by uh, our computer, and it was, picked, it was also missed by over 75% of the doctors. And then these are examples of you know, things that were more obvious melanomas that were picked up. Um, another technology that's being looked at is looking at the gene expression within a mole. So, um, you know, we talked about having a melanoma tissue bank so that you can look at the genes being expressed in melanoma. Um, this is, what about the genes being expressed in the skin? Um, can we look at that without having to actually, uh, you know, remove a lesion, um, without having to do a procedure? And so this is using a piece of tape over, uh, over a lesion and getting a little bit of the genetic material from the cells. Um, so this works on the, uh, the theory that benign lesions will express a lot of one gene, and, uh, um, whereas the malignant ones will only have a little bit of that gene. And the skin cancers will have a higher level of the sort of malignant gene, whereas the benign lesions will have a little bit less. And so this is uh, one study using that on a smaller number of melanomas. And what they found was, again, a sensitivity. They picked up about 97% of the melanomas and with a good specificity of about 72%. This is still in development, but encouraging that we may be able to get information even without a skin biopsy. Um, this is another tool that actually just looks at current being uh, a little electric current uh, going over a mole and then looking at what happens to that electric current. And it turns out that benign uh, tumors and malignant tumors kind of impede that electrical, that flow of electricity very differently and that we can use that. And so if we look at... Um, Mel this is a, a tool called NeviSense that's in development. This was able to accurately uh, pick up about 97% of melanomas and have a specificity of about 35%. So none of these, other than the Melafine system, none of these are really out there and being used in, uh, in the office, but these are all encouraging, uh, encouraging tools that we hope will be able to help us to better find early melanoma. And you know, I need to end with, um, can we prevent melanoma in the first place? This was a study that looked at one group, this is done in Australia, one group was given sunscreen and told to put it on their uh, face and hands every single day, and another group was told, um, you know, apply sunscreen as you wish. And if we look at the number of melanomas, this, everybody from this time period to this time period um, either received sunscreen or didn't, and then we looked at the number of melanomas over time that developed. And what we can see is this yellow group did not receive sunscreen 
sunscreen. This blue group was given sunscreen. And what we can see is there were fewer melanomas among those patients who were given a supply of sunscreen and told to apply it on a daily basis. So overall, their risk of developing melanoma reduced by 50%. Their, their risk of developing invasive or more advanced melanoma went down by 73%. And when they did get melanoma, it was generally thinner. So this is really good evidence that wearing sunscreen does work. Um, what should, people always say, what should I look for in a sunscreen? Um, the American Academy of Dermatology recommends a, a sunscreen of SPF 30 or higher. Um, However, I will point out that um, most people don't apply enough sunscreen. You should have basically the equivalent of a shot glass full that you put on your body and that you reapply it every two hours. And most people don't do that. So um, one of the things that I will recommend, you often see higher SPF sunscreens out there. It turns out that if you take a higher SPF sunscreen and you use less of it, it's not going to work. If it says SPF 80, it's not going to work at 80, but if you use half the recommended amount, it's probably going to work at around the level of a 40. So um, what these higher SPF sunscreens may be a good way to help us make up for the fact that we're not necessarily as good about applying enough. <laughs> and finally, we talked about tanning beds. Um, we know that tanning beds uh, increase melanoma risk by about 75%. Um, the FDA has now taken note of this and has reclassified these as a, as a device that um, has risk to it. And in Pennsylvania, now, we have a law that people under 17 cannot use a tanning bed, and we think that that's really a great change to protect young people. So in conclusion, you know, we, you're going to hear about knowledge in genetics and cell biology and immunology um, for, di for diagnosing and really for treating advanced stage melanoma. But the greatest impact that we're going to have on melanoma is probably going to come from preventing it and from detecting it early. So skin cancer screening can save lives. The earlier you find your melanoma, the better the survival. Um, men over 60, least likely to go and get their skin looked at, but most likely to die from melanoma. So please encourage your loved ones to be screened. Um, and technology can hopefully help us to improve melanoma early detection, but it needs to be rigorously tested. And wear sunscreen, examine your skin, and please don't go to a tanning bed and don't let young, the young people in your lives go to tanning beds either. So thank you all very much. And I guess I'm actually going to take my questions now, right? Okay.